The ISDA's Phase 6 initial margin requirements go into effect on September 1st, 2022. So we're going to go ahead and read these two paragraphs to give you guys some context behind what is actually going on here and make it all make sense. And then we're going to talk about AMC stock. We're going to talk about earnings, how this could play into earnings as well as broad market trends to possibly give us some pretty good upside. So let's get straight into it. As of September 1st, 2022, regulatory initial margin in parentheses im requirements will apply for the first time to hundreds of global counterparties that belong to a consolidated group for which the average aggregate notional amount of derivatives transactions exceeds eight year eight billion euros or a similar amount in local currency this compliance date is commonly referred to as phase six since it is the sixth global compliance date for the phase in of regulatory im requirements since september 1st 2016 so this is the sixth time that initial margin requirements have been updated it goes on to say that isda estimates that more than 775 counterparties with an excess of 5400 relationships may become subject to regulatory im requirements in phase six more than 800 of those relationships may need to exchange im in the near term following september 1st and therefore should be actively preparing at this stage now what this means is essentially margin calls now initial margin is if you look on your Weeble or your Robinhood or whatever brokerage you use, TD Ameritrade, doesn't matter what brokerage it is, and you have a margin account, you will see initial margin. And that's the money that you have to, at the bare minimum, keep in your margin account unless you want to, you know, get get do away with it and go margin crazy and get a margin call, right? That's your initial margin requirement. And this is the sixth time that we have got this implemented since 2016 it's directly related to the derivatives market and as you guys know the derivative market alone is much larger than the whole entire stock market i, th I think the u.s stock market is worth around 45 trillion dollars the derivatives market is worth like 400 trillion dollars it's absolutely colossal and that's why these new requirements are going into effect it's essentially to make sure that you know not one party like a citadel for an example is taking on all of these risky bets that can basically get a hundred or a thousand times leverage and cause a whole lot of losses across the broad industry so it's more like a reevaluation than anything else but there will be uh you know changes in the im requirements the initial margin requirements and potentially you know swap hands from one hedge fund to another to a broker to a bank all these other different parties is 775 counterparties they're not all hedge funds they're not all market makers they're not all banks it's a little bit of everything that is going on here and this goes it pretty much into effect with anyone that does over eight billion dollars worth of derivatives trading per year which is a lot of different firms banks market makers so on and so forth so september 1st that is a pretty big date to watch in regards to amc earnings as well we covered this in the last video but amc stock five out of the last six earnings have been a positive reaction now i know what you guys are thinking if you did not watch the last video you did not see the breakdown you're like how is that it's not the day after earnings or the couple days after earnings, I mean, in, in which AMC has a positive reaction after earnings. No, no, no. The next two to four weeks after earnings have almost always, since we rallied in January of 2021, been a bullish reaction. Back here, Q, uh, Q1 of 2021 was great. Q2, well, you got the first uh, big rally with AMC going from $8 to $72. Back here in August of 2021, same thing happened, $32 to $52. Uh, very substantial rally right there. November was the only earnings where you actually did not come back higher than the day of earnings, which uh, th this is the one that breaks the trend. But even back here in March of 2022, well, you've seen a pretty colossal rally from about $12 at the low end to $36 at the high end and even back here from $9.70 per share all the way up to 18 
about 83% of the time, you see a rally of 50% or more after earnings in AMC stock given the next two to four weeks after earnings. So if you do start to see some margin calls, and like it says right here, you know, uh, more than 800 of those relationships may need to exchange initial margin in the near term following September 1st and therefore should be actively preparing at this stage. I think that's pretty uh, in intuitive of what might happen around September 1st. Now, we might see this as a whole market event. This this could be a pretty big deal across the board, or you might just see different stocks getting a little bit juicier, right? You might see AMC, might see a lot of FOMO start to hit the markets around this day as you are seeing those funds moving around a lot in real time around September 1st. So there is that in, in regards to AMC earnings. You know, August 4th, we get earnings. That's next Thursday. Four weeks from there would be September 4th. So roughly, if we follow the same trend, 83% of the time we have after AMC earnings, if we just follow that trend, it, it should, in theory, match up pretty perfectly uh, to what we have seen in the past. And it could help to br to bring a rally or, or potentially make a rally even uh, more aggressive. So there is that as far as AMC and the actual Ortex data, you can see the dollar amount of shares that are currently sold short is sitting at $1.47 billion. Estimated short interest of free flow at 19.59%. Free flow out on loan 28.02%. Shares out on loan 144.45 million. Days to cover 3.45. Cost bar of 9.71 and 100% share utilization. Now, if we go ahead and look at the cost to borrow numbers, cost to borrow max sitting at 10.1%, cost to borrow average at 9.21%, and cost to borrow minimum at 6.56%. Given what Adam Aaron has said about this upcoming earnings and kind of what the expectations are, I do think the cost to borrow rate will probably be heading up into earnings, and I would doubt you're going to see a lot of... Uh, shorting that happens heading into earnings it, it doesn't take a genius to you know call out what i you know am essentially making this video about there's a lot of bullish things going for amc stock and as you guys do know if you follow this channel at least over the last week you've seen a couple very particular large orders with amc single orders over a million dollars one specific order was a january 20th 2023 call contract for the $25 strike worth $1.3 million. That is estimating a, a big rally is to come, right? If we've seen another rally like we did see last earnings, you know, back in March, well, that that could be uh, a, a, a very good contract, right? So you're seeing a lot of those weird orders. Unfortunately, or Ortex does not let me go back uh, in the option flow history for last week because we are starting a new week. You know, so that that will be uh, very uh, crucial that you guys pay attention to these videos heading forward into uh, the next couple of weeks. Now, as far as the option activity on Friday, you only seen two orders totaling uh, about forty thousand dollars positive order value of one hundred percent. So it looks like not too much activity on Friday, but the activity that we did get was to the bullish side so there is all of that on another note what the markets are really concerned about as of right now and the one thing you guys need to know about the broad markets is that the markets are pricing in and a fully expecting at this point that inflation will come down that inflation has peaked and the fed will not have to act as aggressive you can see that in the fed funds futures market where about 96% of market participants are only expecting a 50 basis point rate hike. That would mean inflation is cooling down uh, over the next two CPI readings that we get. We will get a CPI reading for the month of July. That will come on August 11th. And then we will get the August CPI report coming on September 11th. And then we got the Fed meeting September 21st. So I will tell you guys right now, if CPI continues to go higher, if inflation in general, the different readings of inflation continue to go higher you're going to see more pain in the stock market you're going to see the fed raising rates more than 50 basis points you're going to see uh more of those recession fears so on and so forth and take that how you guys want you know i i know a lot of people are are very mixed on this some people think the bottom is in some people don't it's really just a bet on inflation that's it that's the bottom line to it if you think inflation has peaked well we've probably seen a bottom if you think inflation has not peaked well, we have for sure not seen a 
bottom and actually i did refresh the page and uh 90 of market participants are expecting a 50 basis point rate hike 10 percent are expecting a 75 basis point rate hike so there you guys have all of that we'll go over the um data that you guys need to know the data that's coming out uh, over this next upcoming week we'll talk about that on sunday i don't want to make this video that long but as far as earnings we have for this upcoming week here in after hours on monday we will have pinterest diamondback energy activision avis budget group uh and that's pretty much it tuesday pre-market uber caterpillar bp jet plume marathon uh, marriott international and ferrari look at that one down there i've, I've never seen that one on on uh, earnings whisper before tuesday and after hour amd paypal oxy uh sofi airbnb starbucks gilead uh pretty much it tuesday probably going to be a, a pretty exciting day as well wednesday pre-market under hour under our under our under armor uh moderna cvs health regeneron generic uh yum brands pretty much it there lucid wednesday after hours robin hood uh booking holdings uh that's pretty much it marathon oil thursday pre-market alibaba crocs data dog paramount uh eli lily uh pen national gaming and then thursday and after hours you have amc block fubo twilio uh cloudflare a lot of companies i personally invest in amc block and fubo being some of my largest holdings in my portfolios now friday you have DraftKings, canopy growth uh western digital sinmark it could be important to amc but probably not uh, considering we get earnings on thursday but all in all what the markets are going to care about is data that is coming out data that is going to give the markets a signal of what the fed is going to do next because the fed basically left it up to the markets left left it up to the data that comes out basically said in you know black and white lines here that if the data supports the fed needs to go more aggressive they will and they will do an unusually large rate hike that could be one percent that could be more than one percent to fight inflation uh or the fed could slow down if inflation starts to peak and slow down so at this point you're only betting on what you think is going to happen with inflation don't get too complicated that's why the markets are rallying but the markets are still indeed pricing in a slowdown with the yield curve inversion still inverted 23 basis points and young biden test positive for COVID again will restart isolation despite no new symptoms so that news is just coming out kind of wild young biden uh not good but Anyways, that's pretty much all for this short, sweet, straight to the point kind of video. If you guys like it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. If you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description of this video. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.